looking 20 years before and 20 years beyond. by 20 showing this Saturday at 1 p.m. on TV3 20 by 20 TV3 at 20 20 years in the lives of 20 prominent Ghanaians looking 20 years before and 20 years beyond Twenty by twenty, showing this Saturday at one p.m. on TV Three. Twenty by twenty, TV Three at twenty. Twenty years in the lives of twenty prominent Ghanaians, looking twenty years before and twenty years beyond. 20 by 20, showing this Saturday at 1 p.m. on TV3. 20 onwards and with real experience. That is who we are. That is who we are. That's who we are. That's who we are. In news and covered style. And comments on our page. Like and follow us on Twitter at 3 News GH and at 3 Sports GH. Like our pictures on Instagram, TV3 Network. If you missed our live shows, watch a playback on YouTube, TV3 GH. TV3, first in news, best in entertainment. Log on to WW. All over wet. It's wet all over. They, can, they used to sit in the bare floor and they cannot sit again. See the glass. The tree also doubled as the parking place for teachers where to park their motorbikes. And the tree is also the head teacher's office. So, in fact, we are really in need of your help. Your home is the place you long to be forever. Ghana, get ready for your one-stop destination of choice in perfecting that dream home. It is the biggest super, super discounted fair ever dubbed the Ghana Home and Lifestyle Fair. This is the biggest platform for all manufacturers, dealers, importers, suppliers of electronic appliances and home decor and accessories, lifestyle products, homeowners and related home services such as internet, security and insurance companies to showcase their products and services to the public. Date Friday 24th to Sunday 26th November 2017 at Golden Tulip Hotel Accra. To book your stand or to sponsor the Ghana Home and Lifestyle Fair, please call 0244-627-609 or pick up your registration form at TV3 Premises Kanda. The Ghana Home and Lifestyle Fair is sponsored by Golden Tulip Hotel Accra. Media partners and support by the mirror powered by 3fm 92.7 tv3 and brought to you by planet one multimedia on behalf of the board and management of pz castles ghana we want to celebrate you for this major milestone and we want to wish you well in the several other decades ahead of you tv3 has helped to, to grow the gtp brand especially on the platform called ghana's most beautiful we wish TV3 well. May TV3 continue to be to provide Ghanaians the best of entertainment and credible news. On the occasion of the 20th anniversary celebrations of TV3, we wish you all the best as we believe we still have a lot in common. Once again, happy 20th anniversary to TV3. Another day, drama TV3 Trinqua, so many 20 years. Many TV3 for Aya Juma. Ten years, yet I'm a cheap old Jimmy Debia Moody. You may be three trinqua, you may almost finish up.
Hello, good evening, and welcome to News at 10 on TV3 and on 3FM 92.7. I am Stephen Enti. Let's begin with the day's major news highlights. All 10 regional chairmen of the opposition National Democratic Congress, NDC, have called on former President John Mahama as a matter of urgency to consider leading the NDC into the 2020 general elections. At a meeting held Thursday, November 9, at the cantonment's office of President Mahama, the 10 regional chairmen invited the former president to urgently consider embarking on his delayed thank you tour to thank supporters of the NDC for supporting him during his tenure and the party over the years. Organised labour is to drag the Social Security and National Insurance Trust SNIT to the Supreme Court from next week for interpretation on why its formula has shortchanged Ghanaian workers. According to the Trades Unions Congress, its investigations review that some pensioners lost more than 20 to 28,000 cities of their benefits out of retirement due to wrongful calculations. There is a particular sculptured product the user does not see and the maker does not want. And most often, subjected to stigma, casket maker Theophilos Ni Anum Soa laments constant stigma is pushing people away from the profession. And elsewhere, Saudi Arabia's Attorney General says at least 100 billion US dollars have been misused through systemic corruption and embezzlement in recent decades. Sheikh Saud al Mojib said 201 people were being held for questioning as part of a sweeping anti corruption drive that began Saturday night. Those were our major news highlights. Remember, we're streaming live on our Facebook page and you can also follow our live stream on 3news.com. You are, you're also hearing us live on 3FM 92.7. Up next is the big one. Welcome back. Now, the Greater Accra Regional Chairman of the Opposition National Democratic Congress, NDC, Joseph Ade Koka, has justified a decision by all 10 regional chairmen of the NDC to publicly rally their support behind former President John Mahama for a 2020 comeback. All 10 regional chairmen of the party, after meeting him on Thursday, are demanding an urgent comeback of John Mahama to lead the NDC into the 2020 elections. He's, uh, he spoke on News 360. In our capacity as a regional chairman, which we've got the mandate to speak on behalf of the region, our regional executives, that is what we have found out from our members, and that is what we have gone to tell the former president to do. I see. Now, the former president himself over the weekend said that, I mean, coming out to declare his intention now is going to derail efforts in uh, trying to solve the problems which 
got you to lose that election. And you're coming out now that it is urgent for him to declare his intention? We have not asked him to declare. We have asked him to consider running. You see, people, the English language is there. He says, consider. Nobody has asked him to go and run. When I oh. ask you to consider to do something, I've asked you to consider, go and think about it. No, what, what is the agency about it, really? Yes, because he has to consider whether he's going to run or not. And we are saying he should urgently consider whether he's going to contest or not because the party needs to make a move. So he has to consider. We are asking him. We are not asking him. We are not telling him, go and contest. He said, consider to, to run again. Does that mean that the, the executives, I mean, a chairman will not support the other five persons we know who have declared openly their intention to contest the party's flag bearership for the 2020 no, general election? No, no, no. People have got the right to contest. And we are also asking to consider to contest. So how about the we other not, five? We, are, we have not put our weight behind anybody. Now that we put our weight behind him, we are saying we should consider to contest. Well, there are those who say that you're, you're finding some safe haven under the clouds of John Mahama because as per some of the issues that came out during the Kwesi Boche Committee's uh, national tour, some people were blaming you, the national executives, for failing to do your job, which has led the party into a position. So well, you're doing this to just not, keep your not, jobs. We are not, we are not have, looking for any cover. We are saying you should consider to run, period. Right, interesting uh, conversation there. But uh, let's get on to Skype now. Dr. Kobe Mensa is a marketing communications expert and he's uh, joining us on Skype now. Good evening, Doc. Uh, we're grateful for your time. I know that uh, you've been tired and busy all, all evening and uh, we had to drag you here. But what is happening is interesting, I may say. There are those who feel that this is more like a coup d'etat against the remaining five candidates who also have interest in contesting because these are the same executives who were uh, in office and they were more like responsible for sending the, the, the party into a position. And they're now uh, more like putting pressure on the, the former flag bearer and former president of Ghana to lead the party 2020. What implications does this have on the party's unity? Well, thank you, Stephen, uh, for the question. And thanks for having me. Well, obviously, uh, I didn't actually expect anything less, you know, uh, coming from the party. Now, obviously, uh, you have, you know, a structure, party structure. You have leadership who had actually been with a former president, you know, all along. And then, of course, people jostling here and there, you know, trying to lead the party. Now, you expect that they would try to, you know, put certain strategy in place to make it, you know, obvious to the party rank and file that, the ex-president has, you know, a lot more support, you know, and therefore people should rally behind him. So definitely that is what you see. Obviously, we didn't hear, you know, the party leadership, I, in terms of the 10 uh, regional heads, calling others to consider to, co uh, to compete. However, they did so for the ex-president. So that actually tells you the kind of message they're actually sending out. But, uh, but clearly... You, yeah. Sorry, sir. Go on. Go on, sir. Yes, I was, I was saying that it doesn't actually mean that, that the entire party is buying, because obviously we know that the NDC had moved into universal suffrage, where every member, card-bearing member, has to actually vote. So, of course, we could say that that does not mean that the entire party, but it's very significant, because if you have leaders in all the 10 regions actually calling him to consider, that is massive endorsement for him. And uh, uh, what we really, the bigger concern is also that if, for example, the other five also uh, who have openly declared their intention to contest for the leadership of the party uh, go into a contest, do you not see that this will automatically bring some form of unfairness because all 10 regional executives will be backing John Mahama as, as, as it appears? 
Well, uh, of course, you know, if we talk about, you know, level playing field, you, you would say that it's unfair. But of course, in democracy, everyone has the right to choose, you know, who to back. So therefore, you wouldn't actually suggest that it is unfair for them not to disclose you know, who they want to support. Obviously, they are elected, you know, to lead a party, but they are not actually obliged to say that they have equal support for all the candidates or for all those who have actually declared their intention to support. It is up to them to be able to negotiate, to be able to lobby, to be able to persuade others you know, to join them. Like, mind you, like I said, it doesn't mean that the entire party you know, structure is behind or is calling for the ex-president to, to contest. Of course, the other, you know, avenues that the other contenders could actually persuade to, to back them. But, of course, it's a heavy you know, endorsement you know, behind the former president. Mm, I can imagine that. So how would you expect uh, those other five to react to this message, this uh, appeal from the 10 regional executives for the former president to consider leading the party into the 2020 elections? I'm particularly of a school of thought that you don't complain in strategy or in political strategy. When someone actually pull one strategy, you don't have and to make sure that you could also pull another strategy. Now, if men are supporting or calling for the ex-president to contest, who other? I mean, who are the other people that, as a contestant, you could, you know, I mean, convince or persuade to support you? So it would not be enough for you to complain, but it's about you, you putting your strategy together to pull another one, you know, or to pull, you know, some kind of strategy, you know, going forward to make sure that you could also have enough. So for me, I would advise the other contestant that it would not be sufficient for them to complain because this is a race. This is a competition. What have you got also to pull others to support you? What have you got also to convince the entire party structure? For example, like I said, that the various card-bearing members of the NDC are to vote in this particular leadership contest. Are you able to pull the grassroots to support you? You've got to actually consider that. So I don't think it will be enough for them to complain. They don't have to complain, but they also have to you know, come out with their strategy to make them, you know, a winning candidate. Interesting. Uh, but uh, moving forward, do you uh, get the impression that the party uh, recovering from an electoral defeat has what it takes to go through all these issues and still remain united? We have seen evidence, and some would actually refer to even the NPP in government, we saw a lot of cracks in the MPP leading to the elections. But in the end, what did we see? They pulled together, they won election. So evidently, we have seen that parties could have deep cracks in them. But of course, they are encouraged by one single objective, that is to capture power. And immediately, that objective dawns on everybody. They whip in line, or they whipped in line. So yes, they could have issues. But of course, once they have the dominant objective, they would actually come together. So definitely they would have what it takes right. to fight. The right. Uh, Dr. Kobe Mensa, we're grateful for your time. Thank you extremely. Uh, Thank you for Dr. Kobe Mensa is a political marketing uh, communications expert. And I'm Stephen Enti. I'm right here at the News Hub at Adisawe Kandai and Accra. And you can also hear me on 3FM 92.7. We'll be right back. If you seek affordability, quality, and durability, tap into the variety of furniture and home appliances from King's Furniture Company Limited. We are the ultimate in office home furniture and appliances. You can't go wrong 
with a beautifully designed furniture and a plot. 3news.com for more news and updates of our major stories. Join us on Facebook 3newsgh for live streaming and comments on our page. Like and follow us on Twitter at 3newsgh and at 3sportsgh. Like our pictures on Instagram, TV3 Network. If you missed our live shows, watch a playback on YouTube, TV3GH. TV3, first in news, best in entertainment. 20. TV3 at 20. 20 years in the lives of 20 prominent Ghanaians. Looking 20 years before and 20 years beyond. Twenty by twenty, showing this Saturday at one PM on TV three. Twenty by twenty, TV three at twenty. Twenty years in the lives of twenty prominent Ghanaians, looking twenty years before and twenty years beyond. Twenty by twenty, showing this Saturday at one p.m. on TV Three. Twenty by twenty, TV Three at twenty. Twenty years in the lives of twenty prominent Ghanaians, looking twenty years before and twenty years beyond. 20 by 20, showing this Saturday at 1 p.m. on TV3. 20 by 20, TV3 at 20. 20 years in the lives of 20 prominent Ghanaians. Looking 20 years before and 20 years beyond. 20 by 20, showing this Saturday at 1 p.m. on TV3. 20 by 20, TV3 at 20. 20 years in the lives of 20 prominent Ghanaians. Looking 20 years before and 20 years beyond. 20 by 20, showing this Saturday at 1 p.m. on TV3. 20 by 20, TV3 at 20. 20 years in the lives of 20 prominent Ghanaians. Looking 20 years before and 20 years beyond. 20 by 20, showing this Saturday at 1 p.m. on TV3. 20 by 20. Log on to www.3news.com for more news and updates of our majors oh. without you. TV3 at 20, reshaping news and creating stars in Ghana. Twenty by twenty. TV three at twenty. Twenty years in the lives of twenty prominent Ghanaians. Looking twenty years before and twenty years beyond. Twenty by twenty shows every Saturday and Sunday at one p.m. on TV three. When the news breaks, reporters and anchors broadcast it. Analysts will talk about the impact of this on society. But current affairs will set the agenda for policymakers who implement it. This is what we do on agenda. It's sharp, authentic and hard-hitting. My name is Deborah Kwabla. Join us as we set the agenda.
Agenda now shows on Sundays at 3 p.m. only on TV3 and is supported by 3FM 92.6. is supported by Star Ghana with funding from Danida, DFID and the European Union. Welcome back. Now, former Lands Minister Inusa Fusseini says he's yet to be contacted by national security five months uh, after admitting he intentionally bugged his office to monitor conversations. In July this year, the Lands Minister John Peter Amewu uncovered a recording device uh, planted to monitor happenings in his office. Inusa Fusseini later owned up as being behind that device. He spoke with my colleague, Komala Kluche. Have you been invited by... Uh, no, I've not, I've not been invited yet. I've not been invited yet. Have you made a contact? I don't need to make, make any contact with anybody. I don't need to. I'm here. I'm available. And if they need me, they just invite me. I'm prepared. I can tell you on this matter, I've always said there was no aforethought bad intention. The thing never even worked. It never even recorded a pin. It was never activated. They, I regret though, seriously, having left it in the office because to all intents and purposes, it was useless. This hula balloon, why did I own up? I own up because I thought that people would suffer vicariously for my act and I should own up and be, face the consequences myself. And that's why I, I did it out of my belief that I need to take responsibility for my own Nobody act. Nobody else contacted you since? Nobody. Nobody contacted me. I just read it and I said, no, I should talk about this. On security analyst, uh, Yumano Koting has cast doubt on the security services preparations to prevent an investigator terror attack on the country. Reacting to the national security's failures to investigate former lands minister five months after admitting he bugged his former office, Yumano Koting says, state security is letting the country down. I think our security agencies are letting us down because if you recall five months ago when this issue came, uh, it, it was uh, the talk of the town on all the airways for over two weeks. And I remember the national security minister gave guardians the assurances that they will go to the bottom of this matter. The issue didn't even have to do with the discovery, but the most important and begging issue had to do with the nature of the security device, who brought the security device, and for what purpose. And you realize that the former uh, lands and natural resource minister came up to own to the fact that indeed he was aware of such a device. So the begging questions every world meaning Ghanaian should be asking is why didn't our security agencies pursue the matter further? So when things like this happen, it further deepens the misconceptions that in our part of the world, if you are a very prominent person or you are well to do, there are laws for you and another law for we, the ordinary ones. And I feel that this is not right at all. Well, he's actually indicated that it, did, it was useless. It did not record anything. I mean, from your analysis as a security a, a person, could it just be the case that after analyzing the device and the fact that they didn't really record anything, they let it go without necessarily inviting him? I think that there are two things. 
Uh, Alfred, no one will come and put a useless device in his office. In the first place, why will you come and put a useless device in your office? For what purpose? I think that our security agencies simply, uh, simply lack the requisite war order or the logistics or right. the things to be able to carry out the investigation. And they left it at that. And I think it's not proper for our uh, security agencies as a body. If you remember, BBC even carried this news item. And I'm sure the international community will be looking out to our security agencies what they will come up with their investigation. Okay. So, Alfred, if simple investigations like this, our security agencies cannot carry that out. On the minority in Parliament is to hold the Finance Minister to Parliament to explain why the state is paying 177 million CDs for its 4 billion CDs energy bond. Spokesperson on Finance, Kaisal Atto Forsen, says it is outrageous why administrative cost expenses alone uh, amount to 80 million CDs. This is a follow-up to the minority's press conference on Wednesday. Kaysel Atuforsen says government failed to raise the fiscal cash of 2 billion cities under the energy bond. The amount of money that was actually realized is under 700 million. After an extensive roadshow, the state, after extensive roadshow, the foreigners only participated by uh, less than 100 million. And the local, local investors participated by 600, about 600 million. He was particularly surprised how the state could be paying 80 million cities as administrative expenses under the bond. The state is paying the arrangers 87.5 million Ghana cities. The state is paying legal fees of 700,000 Ghana cities. The state is paying the accountant of 350,000 Ghana cities. Overall, the state is paying 177 million Ghana cities. I think this amount is way too much. This is not the first time the state is raising a bond. The last bond that we raised under the euro bond of 1 billion, which translates to about 4.4 billion, the total cost was under 0.2%. Today we are seeing a bond that we are raising for about 4 billion, and the, the cost is 1.77%. The minority spokesperson on finance said the finance minister would have to explain what constituted the administrative expenses for a bond which only realized 4 billion cities. Printing alone, printing of the, the, the roadshow material was 400,000 Ghana cities. This is, this is not, uh, uh, I'm not manufacturing document. This is everywhere you can go and Google, Google the roadshow material and look at page 29. It is there. Page 29 of the roadshow material is there. The investors are asking questions. How come that the state is spending 177 million, 177 million for a bond that realized only 4.4 billion? And 27-year-old Mabel Amegbeto has been diagnosed with facial tumor. Doctors at the Kolebu Tijin Hospital say she needs 6,550 CDs to undergo surgery. They fear her situation may become terminal if surgery is not done on time. According to her family, the tumor started as a small swelling on her tongue. Three years on, the tumor started growing bigger and now getting out of hand. Mabel now bleeds continuously each day and shows symptoms of fatigue, loss of appetite, sleeplessness and loss of weight. Mabel is battling with facial tumor and needs 6,550 cities to undergo surgery. She is an orphan and her uncle who is taking care of her said they have already exhausted all their funds on Mabel's health, moving from one hospital to the other. I actually would love to do it more often. I think we should all do it um, because this is a great program you guys are doing and it takes money to do what you are doing and therefore you need I mean, support from everybody and I would love to come back again and do it again. Meanwhile, children from Immaculate Heart Nursery School have donated 500 Ghana cities to help Mabel to upset some of her medical bills. Proprietors of the school, Nicolina E.J. Bene, said the donation was to inculcate the spirit of giving in the children. 
officer in charge of social support, Akosia E.J. Suno, received the donation on behalf of the MG social support team. Leader of the kids had this to say. Next time when you are coming, how much will you be? 10,000 million. Okay. 150,000 million. Sympathizers should kindly send their donations to the Kolebu Teaching Hospital or to the TV3 newsroom. A brilliant boy uh, brings some smiles to those of us worried about Mabel's situation. Very di distressing indeed. But that's how we end News at 10. Thank you very much for making time. We have more news at 3news.com. On behalf of the crew here, good night. of Coke Studio Africa. Rap superstars Olamide and AKA give a massive opportunity to this week's big break artist from Kenya. Oh.